one, go. Hello, everybody. It's uh, Holy Week, and we're still stuck inside, and it's raining out. But uh, I got a few comments to make, a few things to read to you, and uh, catch you up on what I've been doing. And then I have a perspective lesson. It will end with an Easter drawing. At least I will. And I'll encourage you to do likewise. So to begin with, I'll read something from my family Bible. This is Luke. And this is Jesus talking about this just before the Last Supper, which is today in his time. And he was telling them about in the day when the people that were alive then were going to see Jerusalem destroyed. He was warning them about all that. And so that's the context in which he's speaking. But it can apply to this with, with the uh, virus that we have. So it's all just, you know, being ready for challenges in life is what he's getting at. So here's, this is Jesus talking to his disciples just before they sat down at the Last Supper. He said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness. Surfeiting is, you know, parting too much. And cares of this life. And so that day come upon you unawares. For as a snare to come up on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth, pandemic. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of God. Okay? The context is a little different, but the whole earth, you know, the pandemic is going over the whole earth. That's why it's called a pandemic. Now, uh, Tenzin Gyatso is the uh, equivalent of the Pope, if you're a, bird, if you're a Buddhist. And uh, I got this from a friend of mine, sent me some stuff that he wrote, and it goes right along with this whole thing. So he says, uh, in 50, 50 years, I, Tenzin Gyatso, will be no more than a memory. But he goes on to say, time passes unhindered. When we make mistakes, we cannot turn back the clock and try again. All we can do is use the present well. Therefore, when our final day comes, we're able to look back and see that we have lived full, productive, and meaningful lives. That will at least be of some comfort. If we cannot, we may be very sad. Which of these experiences is up to us? So these are just ways of looking at what we're going through now and what Jesus we had to go through himself, and he ends up with this quote here. This is the uh, Buddhist guy, the God. So, my true religion, my simple faith, in the sense, there is no need for temple or church or mosque or synagogue, no need for complicated philosophy, doctrine, or dogma. Our own heart, our own mind, is the temple. The doctrine is compassion. So when he says our own mind is a temple. That's when like Jesus said, if you destroy this temple, meaning his body, I will rise in three days. And, and the Buddhist guy's doctrine is compassion, which is no, no different than when Jesus said, love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and your neighbor as yourself. So, you know, it's just different ways of saying the same sorts of things, and who said them, and in what context. And I still favor Jesus, because I think he was the son of God. And I think the Buddhists are sons and daughters of God as well, but <clears throat> that's just my opinion. So don't forget, if you go outside, you have to wear a mask, okay? You're not supposed to go outside, but if you do, you just, you just fold up a, a kerchief, put some elastics in there, and you're all set. You go online and look at, there's a million different ways, there's things on the internet right now. You can make all kinds of masks. I tried to do a more complicated one today, and it didn't work out that well. So <laughs> I, I gave up on that. Okay, so I'm going to put the uh, back where it goes. And I'll catch you up on the last couple of drawings I did. I think I showed you this one, but in case I didn't, I'm just going to double check because I, I added to it a little bit as well. So this is the uh, quick sketch I did in my living room. And just look at the, the hash marks and the sketchy way I did it. And when you look close, there's no real detail. It's all kind of just scribbly. 
but when you get away from it, you get the idea. So that, that was the whole idea. I was trying to get through to that on that lesson. And then I think I might have shown you this one, but I went back and did more to it. It was very rough at first. It's still rough, but I added some detail in the wood grain and the, the cat scratch posts. I worked on that some more. Okay, since then, I did a couple more. Here's one. I was watching TV. The cat gets up on my lap as usual. Oh, there it is. He's the yellowish one. There's my dungarees of the blue. But then look at, I look across the room at the window and look at the difference. From just a sketchy one here to a more detailed one. And again, I didn't count every slat and make sure I had the right number of slats. I just copied the basic idea of what the window looked like. It took quite a while, but I didn't draw the neighbor's house in between all those negative spaces there. It was too much. That was fun. And lastly, it's always good. If you can't do anything else, draw yourself, draw hands, draw your own hands. So this one came up pretty good. The other one, not so much. It looks like a club, not a hand, but you know, you just got to keep doing it. I've been practicing for almost 70 years and I'm still learning. So here we go. One last thing is remember, I demonstrated drawing this chair, it's just a real, real rough sketch. But I went back and, and touched some more. So if you look at that, you know, I went back and tried to see the difference. There, you compare the two. And it's real rough. It's not that detailed, but you know, you can get the idea. So that's, it's good to draw loosely sometimes, but a lot of times you want to be much more technical. Depends on what you're doing. So this is all by way of uh, introducing what I want you to think of today or during this week, during Easter week. Get more detail. Now this is something we've talked about before, but not in this detail. Since I can't walk around and show you what I'm talking about, person to person. This is just something that you can take more time with yourself and follow up on things I've shown you before. Okay, one point perspective. Here's an aerial view. Okay, there's the vanishing point. Notice every line, not every line, but every line that goes back in space goes right to that point. I used a ruler for that. Draw every line, trace it with a ruler. But the whole idea is that this point is your, is your eye. This is where you're looking down at this point. If you were over top to this building looking down at this point, that would be your vanishing point. So this just represents your viewpoint, okay? So if you're looking down at a street, and these are all tops of buildings. So first you do the top of the building, and then you draw with a ruler. I'm just doing this quickly. Towards the vanishing point. Now, don't draw all the way down to the vanishing point because everything doesn't end it, you know, buildings don't go on indefinitely. They stop somewhere. So they stop here. And then you, you for the sides of the windows, same idea. And the tops of the windows. So if it's something the same distance from you stays even. So things that you're looking down on are just square. But things that are going away get smaller. So that's the same idea on all of these buildings. Now, what if these weren't buildings? What if these were just shapes somewhere in space and the horizon was here? Then everything above that is your eye level. You're looking up at it. So instead of thinking of these as sides of the building, think of them as sides of just any old shape. So here, you're looking at the bottom of the shape because it's in the air. Imagine that, imagine those are floating in the air. So now this is the bottom of something. If you look down at it as a building looking down, this is the top. This is the bottom, not the side. Follow me? You could rotate this thing any way at all. And it's the same thing. Everything above that point, you're looking up at and everything below the point, you're looking down at. Now this 
part of this building is the top of a, a box or whatever. The top, and this is the end. If you think of it as an aerial view, you're looking down on the top. And this is, this is these are two sides of the building. All right, can you follow that? The perspective, the, the visual effect is the same, no matter what way you look at it. Okay, to emphasize that some more. Put this away. I took the same and just colored it. So it's easier to see what I'm talking about. Because uh, the reason it looks so much the same, I video take, uh, I photocopied these. Made so if, if it was, if I had you in class, I'd hand you out one, you could just color it in. Okay, you're looking down at a road, the, the, the black is the road, and see what tucks behind that building. Now when you draw, you draw a straight line right through, but draw very lightly at first with a pencil, because you can have to erase stuff. If this is the curb, this is the curb zone, curbside. All the ends of the buildings have to stop within that. Don't draw past that point. You can see how things are real close to your eyesight. You'll just, just barely see the edge of that building. And as you get further away, you see more of it. Or if you did it this way, imagine this isn't a building. These are just shapes floating in space. Okay, now you're looking at the end, the bottom. This is the bottom of it. This is the bottom, this is the bottom, this is the bottom. Because you're looking up these, you're looking at the tops of these. These tops, the blue shapes are all the tops. And these purple ones are the ends that are facing towards you. Or if there's buildings, you're looking down on tops of buildings. So no matter which way you rotate, it's the same idea on all of them. So I want you to practice that. And if you want to have um, something more realistic, realize that this is arbitrary. The vanishing point is the area. We're squeezing all this stuff onto that. But in reality, when you really go out, say you were flying over uh, an actual city, the buildings wouldn't squeeze so much so quickly because the vanishing point is just an imaginary way to help us draw pictures. It's not a point that actually sits there and everything's gearing towards it. So it's a little distorted in a way. It looks real sort of, but it's, it's a distorted because we're squeezing the vanishing points onto a piece of paper. In reality, things go into the distance way far away. You know, like I'm sitting in a room, I look out the window, the vanishing point to the house I'm looking at out there is probably, you know, half a mile away. So you have to understand that. So this is a two perspective, two point perspective drawing. If you realize that these points are squeezed onto a piece of paper. So the distortion of reality is a little bit accentuated, but you can still see it as a recognizable thing. So I did, you know, here's your, initial line, and then you draw towards a vanishing point. And I used a ruler, and I just put the dotted line there to show you what I'm talking about. But you don't need to draw that, just draw carefully to a certain point and then just come straight down. And come from this, you come straight up and then stop when you get to that line. The straight up and down lines are things that are the same distance away from you. And then even on the, the thickness of the door frame here, that dotted line goes right straight through all the way through to there. Same vanishing point. See, so every line either goes straight up and down or goes to vanishing point, even these little ones. This little line is lining up with that vanishing point. This little line is lining up with that vanishing point. And the reason I did it looking like this is because I want to show you, it's the same thing that I was saying about the, uh, the aerial view. This could be an aerial view. See, it could be a shape, just any old shape in the air. It has a dimension to it. It could be like this, it's the same thing. It's the same concept carries throughout. Let's see if this helps me. Yeah, that's better. The same concept works, no matter what you're looking at or where you're looking at it. If you're in the air or you're looking up or across or down, it's just the nature of the way the human eye perceives shape and distance, which is all an illusion, you know, if you think of it, because this, this, wind, this wall here is just the same height as this wall if you went out and measured it really in real life. It's just that it looks small. 
So which is more real? Hard to say. That's the difference between orthographic and perspective. Orthographic is you don't have things get smaller. They just, you, all your lines are parallel. In fact, I'll just show you what I'm talking about. In case somebody forgot, orthographic is when you go. So I'm not going, this, in this one, I'm not going to a vanishing point. I'm just going three lines like this. So there's no vanishing point. That's orthographic. Ortho means straight. Graphicos means writing. So straight writing. And that's probably just as real as the perspective. But this looks more real. Okay, so I've made that point before. This is just a drive it home. So give yourself, try doing a one perspective and try a two perspective one. Start, you start with a corner of a building or whatever shape you want to use. The lighting is kind of weird, huh? Start with a corner and then you go back in two directions. And this one, you start with a flat shape. This is, whoops, this is orthographically drawn. Okay, it's the same. These, these two lines are parallel. These two lines are parallel. So that's how you draw it. You can start with the parallel here with a one perspective. You do the orthographic part and then the part that goes away. And here, there's no orthographic part at all. Everything goes away because it's, it's just the corner of the building. And then you go back in two directions. All right, try that one. Now, this is another one. This is two point perspective, same idea, but with a horizon perspective. I don't know, this thing, this lighting might be a little awkward. No, nah, I guess it's better with it. See the horizon? The horizon's in the middle of the page. That's your eye level. You do one like this, and you have the horizon up high. Here we go. The horizon's up high, that means that's your eye level, right? So everything below there, you're looking down. So this is, now this is the top of this shape. And these are the two sides going back in perspective. All right, so this is two point perspective. The, the horizon now isn't here in the middle of the, the building or shape, it's way up high. Or the horizon is low. Now, this is your eye level, it still is. This is always your eye level. That's where the vanishing point is. It's your eye level, it's where you're, where you're looking from. So, you switch it over. Now, you're looking at the bottom of the shape, not the top. Same two sides, going back in the distance. So the horizon, if you want to show something, mostly sky, when it'll be looking up, bring your horizon down. If you want to show that you're looking down on the ground and a little bit of sky, but who cares about the sky? You want to have roads, you would draw your roads the same way. You would have the road going back towards the vanishing point. Whoops, there you go. I just noticed my hands, so, so it's a little more awkward, but. Don't forget, you can go like this. Oops, there's a curb. There we go, there it is. Hey, remember these? We've done this before. And I did this one, I did, uh, hold this thing. Some trouble with this lighting. There's your wheelchair ramp. Okay, so you're going back, back to, you know, this is a road goes back and back, back it's smaller. And then you just chop a little hole. Now this, this slice here goes back to the same vanishing point. And then this is the thickness of the curb and you just draw a straight line like that. And whoever's got a wheelchair can get down and now it's real easy. All right. A lot of this is repetition, but I, I don't think I've ever had you spend a lot of time, more than one period, doing a perspective drawing. So take your time. Like I've been showing you, these things take time. I went back and worked on that chair drawing. I went back and I go, you know, I don't always go back, but it's a good idea to think about going back, all right? And spend more time with something on a regular basis. And, you know, I always caution you to don't do too much. You have to know when to stop, but it's better to overdo it and learn that you should have stopped at a certain point than to not give it your all. You want to give it your all. Okay, now, what about three-point perspective? 
Okay, you can go on and on and have a million points because in real life, if you look at everything you look at, it goes back in space. So I, this imaginary vanishing point, there's millions of them. They're all over the place, depending on what you're looking at. Mostly houses and buildings where you can really see that happening. But even with a tree, you know, a branch that goes away from you, it might get smaller. It might be imperceptible to us now, but you have to just think in these terms. Okay, so here's the same idea. Here's a uh, I don't know if <laughs> the lighting is a little... Okay, so I have two vanishing points on the, on the horizon. So these things go back to that thing. But the third one, the third vanishing point is the top of the, of the drawing. Whoop. So you're drawing up to that vanishing point. So you get that. But these, these two walls, these two edges, these also go up to that same vanishing point. I didn't do all the dotted lines, but you can see what they're doing. They're not going straight up anymore. They're going slanting towards this top vanishing point. So we're drawing towards this to show height. You want to show things go up and away from you. They get smaller as they go up. Okay. Now, before with a one point vanishing point or two point, something in the sky only gets smaller if it goes down towards the horizon. You just draw it smaller, but you don't draw the angle smaller. Now, with a third vanishing point, you can even incorporate that and then so I started with this line here draw it toward the vanishing point then the second one moved over I just said okay let's go from here draw it towards the vanishing point and stop and then go down to here for the other two and the two sides again these other two sides go right up there and the third the third layer is the same so give that a try. Give these all a try. Now also, this is a low horizon, mostly things in the air. It's a tall building or tall structure. Now it's a tall structure that's skinny at the bottom and big at the top. So this is the ground. This is the ground level and this is the eye level. This is above your eye level. Just take your time. I should have made this line a little darker so you can see it. That's why I colored it. All right, so all that is things I'd like you to spend some time on. Spend, spend a good amount of time trying to do one point, two point, three point perspective and see what you can come up with. Now, since it's Easter, or almost Easter, today's the last supper day, a little morose and scary, just like this virus is scary. But there's always hope because come Easter, He is risen. All right. So now I could notice the one point perspective is just above that eye there. Now, again, if this good example, if I really thought about it, I would have had the vanishing point right in the middle of the eye, but I drew the eye in later. I didn't think of that. Minor point, but it just goes to show because uh, it's the eye of God. Okay. So I really want it to be at the center of the picture, eh, slightly lower. Maybe he just blinked. But anyway, now, instead of drawing the drapery straight down, I did them in perspective. So it's just a piece of cloth. From this perspective, using the foot of the cross looking straight up towards the eye of God, you see the bottoms of the cross pieces. And the drapery, instead of drapery and having the drapes come straight down, I almost started doing it straight down. I said, wait a minute, this is perspective. So I had to go with my ruler and have it go away from the vanishing point. And then final detail, if you notice at the very bottom, see, this is just the, the cobblestones. Mount Golgotha means the place of the skull. Okay, so I got a little skull on there represents death, but never mind that, he's risen. So think about all that stuff. Think about doing something in detail, spending time with it, going back to it later maybe, put in a half an hour on something, take a break, different, come back to it. And, uh, you know, you might want to do some kind of Easter theme. If not, at least think about it. So your homework, if you want homework, is, you know, remember, three-point perspective. 
And these illusions are all the same, no matter what angle you look at them. You know, it's the way the mind, the the, uh, the eye, and things are put in perspective. There's so many different ways to do this. It's fun. Art is fun. So that's it for today. I want everybody have a blessed Easter. And um, we'll be in touch. Ave Maria. Gratia plena. And I want to learn it the, um, like Miss Connerty did, she does the, the Hail Mary in Spanish. And I only know it in Latin and English, so I want to add to my repertoire. I'm going to learn how to do it in Spanish as well. So I love you guys. I miss you. I wish, wish we could be together, but make the best of it. Remember, it's all about compassion. Bye, folks. Ave Maria.